Hello, I'm Maury Reese. Welcome to my YouTube. I'm going to be talking about expanding what a Tyros keyboard can play for free. A little bit about myself. Um, I have 33 years uh, experience playing Yamaha keyboards. I'm also a retired Apple computer executive, so I know a lot about iPhones, iPads, and Macintoshes. And over the last six years, I have published over 208 music YouTube videos. Let me start with how does a Tyros 5 produce music? This happens to be my latest Yamaha keyboard, the Tyros 5. And there are five ways that it can produce music. First of all, I can store audio MP3 recordings inside the Tyros and play them with these buttons. Secondly, it comes with voices, or you would call them instruments, and those are controlled by these buttons over here. I'll talk more about that in just a moment. There are also things called multipads, and three or four days ago I did an entire YouTube presentation on what multipads are. They're controlled by these buttons. I also have styles and they are controlled by the buttons in here. And finally, I can load in MIDI files and play those songs, and they're controlled by these collection of buttons. So these are the five ways that a Yamaha Tyros keyboard can produce music. So how many multipads came in my Tyros when I bought it six years ago? And the answer is, they gave me 190 different pads that I can play. And pads are little pieces of music that follow my style, my rhythm, my keys. How many voices did my Tyros 5 had? And those voices, you would call them instruments, they call them voices. They're pianos and strings and choirs and electric guitars and synthesizers and drums. And uh, all together, my Tyros had 1,796 voices or instruments that it came preloaded with. How many styles came in my Tyros? And those styles are ballads and dance and rhythm and blues and Latin and ballroom and country. Altogether, there are 539 styles that came pre-installed in my Tyros 5. So here's a question. How many MIDI songs can I access and play at any one time on a Tyros? And the answer is, how big is your thumb drive? Because I can store these MIDI songs on a thumb drive and have instant access to them. The next question. How many MP3 audio songs can I access instantly and play on a Tyros? And once again, the answer is, how big is your thumb drive that you plug into it? That's where I can store these songs. Let me give you an example. On an 8 gigabyte thumb drive, which is quite small today, you could store any one of the following. 16,000 voices, 160,000 MIDI songs. And by the way, if you played them 24 hours a day, seven days a week, it would take you 333 years just to play the MIDI songs that I could store on one eight gigabyte drive. I can store 2,000 audio songs and that'll take four days just to play through all of those. I can store 133,000 styles. Or how about this, two million multipads. Any one of these can be stored on a small 8 gig thumb drive. Here's the way I use it. On my 8 gig thumb drive, I can hold everything listed below. 2,000 voices, 20,000 MIDI songs, 250 MP3 audio songs, 16,635 styles, and 250,000 multipads. All of that will fit on one small 8 gigabyte thumb drive. 
here is my eight gigabyte thumb drive. Six years ago when I bought my keyboard, I bought this thumb drive. And this poor thing has been battered and beaten up and, uh, and it looks crummy. But over the six years, I still haven't filled it up. I still have 1.58 gigabytes left of the original eight that it came with. This is old fashioned and small. Today for $7, I can buy 32 gigabytes. I spent $12 and I bought a 64 gigabyte, or you can go 128, which is 16 times bigger than the one I'm using. If you really want to go whopper, a 256 gigabyte, 32 times the capacity of what I've been using for the last six years. Staggering amount of storage. So what does it take to load additional styles, voices, multipads, MIDI songs, and audio songs into a Tyros keyboard? What technology do I need to be able to get those things into it so I can expand it? And here's the good news. You can use an iPhone or an iPad or a Macintosh to download styles, voices, MIDI songs, multipads, MP3 audio files, and, and put them into a Yamaha keyboard. And later on, I'm going to do that. Now, I'm a retired 30-year Apple executive, so friends, I don't know anything about Windows computers. Uh, I am strictly Macintosh iPhone iPads. So I'll let other people talk to you about how you could use Windows or the other operating systems. I, I know and understand iPhones, iPads, and Macintoshes, hence that's what I talk about. So what am I going to show you in this video? Because I'm going to go live with recordings here in just a moment. This is just a preview of where I'm headed. First, I'm going to download a multipad, a mini song, and an audio song file, all from one website, and I'm going to load it into my 12-year-old MacBook. And I'm purposely using my old MacBook. I have four Macs running, but this is the oldest, just to make the point that you don't need the latest, most powerful computer to do what I am doing. Then I'm going to download a style off of the internet, actually the same place, and put that into my iPhone. So I want you to see, how do you do it on a Mac? How do you do it on a phone? How do you do it on an iPad? And I'll use all three. Then I'll download a voice off of the internet into my iPad. And I'll have a screen recording and I'll show you that live. Finally, I'll show you how to attach a regular USB thumb drive up to your iPhone or your iPad and transfer a style or voice or multipad or MIDI song or audio song onto the USB thumb drive. So it doesn't matter if you start with a Mac, an iPhone or an iPad, all three of them will attach to this regular old thumb drive that you may have had laying around in your desk drawer for several years. I'll show you what that process looks like and how you get the files from your phones and iPads into the thumb drive. And once I have the voices or styles, multipads, MIDI songs on the USB drive, I simply stick that USB thumb drive into my Tyros keyboard and I now have instant access to any and all of those songs or files or voices or styles. That's it. Now I'm going to log on to a website. It happens to be called the PSR Tutorial. And I'm going to show you how to download a multipad. Okay? Up here at the top, and by the way, I will be using this same website on the iPhone and the iPad. Up here at the top is something called Styles, so I'm going to click on Styles. And now I'm going to scroll down this page and I'm looking for the multipad files. And there they are, right here. So now I'm going to click on that. Click. 
Now I'm in the section where I can download multi-pad files. And uh, over here are the names of the men and women who have created these. By the way, this is all free. This is all legal and free. The generosity of these talented people, they have created these things and they just give them away. So I'm going to log on to this guy called Henny. I'm going to click on his name. Click. And I chose him because this one guy has created 2,501 multi-pad files. A staggering amount of work over the years. And here they all are. Each one of these is a collection. Here's 245. Here's 239. Here's 250. So I'm just going to pick one at random. I'll say this one. And I'm just going to click on it. And when I do, watch what happens. Click. Woo, did you see that thing bounce? Let me show you where did it go. It went down here into my download folder on my Macintosh. And there it is. There are the 250 multipads all contained inside this folder. And I've just clicked it to open it up just to show you. There they all are. All right, let's close it up. Okay, so let me go back and uh, open up my uh, download folder. Whoops, wrong, wrong button here. Now, sitting over here on my desktop is my thumb drive, which I plugged in. So to transfer it, you Macintosh people know how I'm going to do this. I just pick it up with my mouse and I bring it over here and I put it on top of that and the little plus sign says you're good to go. And so it's drag and drop. Download it into my down folder, drop it onto the thumb drive, I'm good to go. Okay, let's close that up. All right, the next thing I want to do is I want to get a MIDI song. So let me go back to the home. And uh, th there's a tab here that says songs. So I'm going to click on that. Click. And now across the top are some more tabs. And this one, the third one over says, M I'm sorry, MIDI files right here. And I'm going to click on that. Click. Now, there are 5,775 songs in this section, and they are all listed alphabetical, and across the top is the alphabet. So here's all the songs beginning with E. Here's all the songs beginning with K. Here's all the songs beginning with A. And uh, it's, it's simply alphabetical. Okay, so let's see. Here's somebody I know. Here's ABBA. Here's a medley of ABBA songs. So this is a MIDI file, a MIDI song that this lady called Gloria Hansen, she created it some years ago. And it tells me the tempo and uh, the time signature. It's 4-4 time. And to download it, I do this. I put my mouse on the song and I click and whoop. There it goes. You know where it's headed. It's going right back into that same uh, download folder. And here it is. Here is the file. And so once again, I'm going to pick it up with my mouse, drag it over here onto that thumb drive. And if I open up the thumb drive, there it is. So it's drag and drop. Let me close that again. All right. The last thing I want to do on the Macintosh, and then we'll move to the iPhone. I want to download an audio song. It's actually stored as an MP3 file. So once again, I start on the main page by clicking on the Song tab. And this tab right here says MP3 files. I'm going to click on that. Click. Once again, there are thousands of songs here. They're all alphabetical. So you just click on the letter up here 
and it instantly takes you to songs beginning with that letter. So let me just go back to the A, for example. And um, I don't know what this song is. Adios Amor, Goodbye My Love. Now this is a little bit different. Watch what happens. I'm going to click on that. Click. And it takes me to this page where I can actually click this button and just play it. I mean, it's an audio file. It's an MP3 file. But I want to download it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to press the control key and click right here. And then I'm going to say download the video as, with me so far? I'm going to select that. And it has converted it to an MP3 file. Good. That's exactly what I want. So I'm going to load that onto my desktop by clicking on the save button. Ready? Click. And here it is. It's now sitting on my desktop and you know what I'm going to do. I simply pick it up, drag it over here onto the thumb drive, open up the thumb drive, and there they are. I have my audio song, my multi-pad, and my MIDI file. All drug off of the internet and ending up on this thumb drive. So now let's move to the iPhone and I'll show you how I do file transfers uh, from a phone and eventually get it onto that thumb drive. Here we are on my iPhone. I'm going to go into that same web page and I'm going to use my iPhone to download a style. So down in the dock, I'm going to tap the PSR tutorial website and I'm going to take my fingers and expand it up a little bit so we can see it a little bit better. I'm going to touch the word styles in the top middle of the screen. Ready? Tap. And now I need to scroll down. I'm looking for the word collections. There they are. So I'm going to touch the blue collections. Ready? Tap. And this is where I get to choose whose collection I want to use. Notice that there are 63,000 styles here. 63,000. They're all free. People have created these things and they just give them away for nothing. Wonderful people. Uh, I'm going to touch this guy called Henny, H-E-N-N-I. Ready? Tap. And the reason I chose him is because he has created over 11,000 styles and he gives them all away. So how do I download a style and get it into the file folder of my iPhone. Watch. In the middle of the screen, uh, he has a collection of uh, ballads, beat, and big band. And I see under the big band, he has 41 styles. I'm just going to arbitrarily choose that one. So I'm going to tap on the word bigband.zip. Ready? Tap. And it says, do you want to download bigband.zip? Yes, I do. I'm going to tap the word download. Tap. Now, I noticed you, you didn't notice it, but in the upper right-hand corner, I saw that see, there's a little circle with an arrow. I saw that thing bounce, and if I touch on it, it says, yep, you have downloaded the big band. That's what I wanted to know. All right, so I've downloaded a style. Let me go find it. I'm going to click the home button. Down in the middle of my dock is the file folder. It's that little blue folder looking thing. I'm going to tap on it, tap. I'm going to, now it wants to know where do I want to look? I want to look on my iPhone and that's right in the middle of the screen. So I'm going to tap on, on my iPhone, tap. And lo and behold, there's a folder top left that says Downloads, and it says you have one item in it. I'm going to touch it and open it up. Tap. So there it is. It's bigband.zip. Zip means it's been compressed. 
For the non-technical people, it's kind of like freeze-dried coffee. They take all of the water out of the coffee and you end up with just freeze-dried chips. Z uh, zipping is kind of like that. It's a way of shrinking down a file. In the old days, years ago, our internet connections were very, very slow. And so we wanted everything to be as small as we could make it. Therefore, people developed the ability to compress the files down to tiny sizes. And that's why this thing has been zipped to make it smaller. So I need to unzip it. And to do that, I'm going to reach out and just tap it with my finger. Tap. Done. The minute I did that, it unzipped it. If it were coffee, it's putting the water back in. And now I'm going to tap on that folder. Tap. And sure enough, inside here, there are the 41 styles that Henny created and graciously gave away. And now they are sitting in the download folder on my iPhone. And in a little bit, I'll show you. So how do I get them from my phone onto that USB thumb drive? Stay tuned. So here we are on my iPad. I'm going to go into that same website, but this time I'm going to download a voice. So I'm going to tap the website, far left in the dock. Ready? Tap. Looks very familiar, just like the Macintosh and the iPhone. Once again, up at the top menu, fourth from the left, the word styles. I'm going to touch that. Tap. Now I'm going to scroll down because I'm looking for voice files. And there it is, right in the middle of the screen, voice files. I'm going to reach out with my finger and touch the word voice files. Ready? Tap. So now we're in the section where I can choose whose voice files I want. This time over on the left, I see MB's collection. I, I'm going to tap on him, tap. Whoever MB is, he or she has created 4,300 voices over the years. And he or she is giving them away. All I have to do is download them. So I'm looking at the list here to decide which ones I want. Um, on the left side, I see draw bar voices, zip. Draw bar, that's the, uh, that's the classic Hammond B3 organ. When I was a little boy, that's the organ I learned to play on. Uh, I love the B3 organ. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to download those draw bar voices. And I'm going to touch the word draw bar voices dot zip. Ready? Tap. And it says, do you want to download this? Yes, I do. I'm tapping the word download. Tap. All right, that should pretty much do it. Uh, let's leave this website and let's go into the file folders on my iPad. So once again, down in my dock, second from the left is the blue file folders. I'm going to tap that. Ready? Tap. And sure enough, we are looking inside the download folder on my iPad, and there are the draw bar voices. I'm going to tap on the folder, tap. And now I'm looking to see specifically which ones he has created. So what I'm going to do is I will load these on a thumb drive, and I'll show you how to do that in just a moment stick that thumb drive in my Tyros, and lo and behold, I'll be able to turn my Tyros keyboard into the classic Hammond B3 organ that I learned to play on when I was 10 years old. So let's go now and watch how do I attach a USB thumb drive up to an iPhone or an iPad, and how do I get these voices and styles and MIDI files transferred over to that thumb drive. In this last section, I'm going to show you how I transfer the files from my iPhones and my iPads and my Macintosh into the Tyros. 
And the answer is I have to get them on a USB thumb drive. That's what goes in the Tyros. In the case of my Macintosh, no problem. It just plugs into the USB connector on the end of my keyboard and I'm good to go. But I've got a problem with my phone or my iPad. The phone uses the lightning connector and this USB will not fit on that. So here's the solution. I went out and I bought for $39 this Apple Lightning to USB camera adapter. And here's the way it works. Lightning on one end, so that goes into my camera. So far, so good. USB on the other end, so my USB goes in there. And the minute I do it, I get a warning on my screen. Let me read it. Cannot use accessory. This Cruiser Glide 3.0, this accessory requires too much power. In other words, this won't work, but wait. So I go and I get the power adapter that came with my iPhone camera, okay? Because you see, there are actually two connectors on the end of this, USB, and the other one is a lightning connector. So I take my phone power adapter and I plug that in and voila, I'm good to go. So this is how I supply enough electrical power that this thing can read the USB. So for my iPhones and my iPads, I can use this USB or this lightning to USB camera adapter and I can use any old thumb drive that I've had laying around in my my drawer for years. There is nothing special about the USB thumb drives. This camera adapter does all the magic to convert everything. So now that I've got the thumb drive hooked up, in the final scene I'm going to do a screen recording of my iPhone so you can see how do I transfer the files from the phone into the USB. So now I'm ready to transfer the file from the file folder on my iPhone onto the USB thumb drive. So I'm going to open up my file folder. I'm going to look on my iPhone and I see the downloads folder. That's where my files are setting. So I'm going to open that tap. There's the big band. That's the style that I downloaded and I want to transfer that to the USB. So in the upper right hand corner, I'm going to touch select and I'm going to select big band and now I'm going to touch the folder icon down at the bottom and I'm going to touch the 64 GB blue. That is my thumb drive. And now I'm going to touch the word copy. And I am copying the file from my iPhone into the thumb drive. And now if I go back, go back to browse, and if I touch 64 GB, that's my thumb drive. There's the big band that has been transferred from my iPhone into the thumb drive. Now I'm ready to unplug the thumb drive, take it over to my Tyros, plug it in, and I'm good to go.